The first thing I came across here uh, was over on LinkedIn, actually, a post from Anthony Porter um, with some updates to an Intune remediations uh, repository on GitHub. Um, I had come across a couple of other Intune remediation repositories over the the past year or so that I think we've shared a, a at various times, um, but I had not come across the Anthony's yet. So I find these, I, I love to share these when I find them uh, because these are a great inspiration to the community. Um, and there are a lot of things that you can implement with um, a- after significant testing, of course, uh, but oftentimes you can implement some of these things in your own organization without too much effort, thanks to the effort of these community members. So in Anthony's repository here, he had a couple of uh, different uh, folders that have various remediations for things like BitLocker, DeviceGuard. Um, the updates that I saw he had recently made uh, to this repository were some uh, office templates, some custom toast notifications uh, that might be something that you want to use in your organization. So uh, thank you for sharing this uh, with the community, Anthony. This is great stuff. I also came across um, what probably many of you in the Intune world saw this week. Um, service release 2408 came out couple of things that um, stuck out to me. As usual, there are a number of improvements that have come through uh, in terms of managing uh, Android, iOS, macOS, Windows, and some platform changes. But two things I noticed, um, the performance report for physical devices, Windows physical devices, if you have an advanced analytics license or an Intune suite license, Um, These are things that look at CPU usage, RAM usage, things like that on endpoints um, that might help you out. Uh, So that was one thing that I noticed. And, oh, I should mention this. You were talking about this just yesterday, Johan. How could I forget the improvements to the Intune management extension logs? Um, Did you see this pop up on any of your endpoints yet that you noticed? No. Yeah, uh, I was okay. actually checking one of them yesterday, and I saw it just got the uh, the IME agent updated on okay. August 22nd. I was like, hmm, I wonder why. And uh, I bet it's this one. But John did have a, oh, good Lord, what was his last name? Towels? Towels, yep. Do you happen to have that link? I don't have it immediately handy, but I know where we can get it. You know a guy? I do. And I happen to know John's blog. There you go. Uh, Okay, I got it here. Great call. That was a good share for today. Yeah, this one right here. Deep deep dive of it, and I really like the, the information that was shared. So good stuff. Awesome. We'll make sure to get this up today. So, I mean, at at a high level, basically for Win32 apps that you're deploying through Intune, those logs have now been split out into their own log, basically. Fantastic stuff. Happy to see that improvement. And the last thing that I wanted to mention here, uh, where'd it go? Ah, we now have a CPU architecture filter. Um, Basically, so you can filter on x64, you can filter on ARM. Um, So pretty cool stuff there. A welcome improvement, for sure. And last but not least, uh, Brian Dam wrote a wonderful article, I think, on the Patch Tuesday blog. Uh, The CrowdStrike debacle, a love letter to system administrators. I thought this was fantastic, Um, very well written, talked about what happened, um, and started off with just a heartfelt thank you to all of the sysadmins uh, that had to go through and deal with the CrowdStrike issue um, back in July. Um, Recommend the read. It is not too long, but it has some very great information, uh, lessons learned, Uh, What did Patch My PC learn, which makes sense that he put it in here, because this is on a Patch My PC blog. Um, 
really great stuff. I'd encourage you to go read it if you have a few moments. So that was what I had for today. All right. Um, I don't have too much other than I was working uh, back up, uh, doing backup and restore of uh, a bunch of virtual machines this weekend. Uh, not entirely planned, put it that way, but uh, over my entire career, I've been uh, the biggest fan of, of Samsung hard drives, always being very reliable, even down to the consumer-grade versions. They have been reliable. But now with these... Um, uh, Four, uh, four terabyte NVMe uh, Samsung disk. This is the third one that decides to go shaky on me. And the way it expresses itself, it, it, it's no fun at all. But once you start to put load on it, uh, 20, 30 VMs running on the same disk, Windows forgets that it exists, forgets that it has a file system. So you get like an invalid MS DOS function. Like, no. <laughs> right here it's very much valid uh, and the only way workaround to get it back is to power off the device or workstation and bring it back up again and then it will run for another few hours and then rinse repeat in another few hours uh, so i i bought two new ones so i have some store for i can actually move them away to so i've been spending my my weekend and the few work days that we had so far of migrating content away from it uh, and that ended up uh, being uh, a video out of it, in fact. So <laughs> if I share my screen here, um, here, uh, up on our little YouTube channel, or one of them, I should say, because this is not the uh, Biomaster one, but the Comet Research one, my blog, or the, the one that is connected to, to uh, the blog where, where me and Andrew and some others are, are posting our findings. Uh, uh, if I sort on videos here, this one, the CPAC archiving utility. Uh, not too many people uh, have heard about it. I've been using it for almost 10 years by now. Uh, I stumbled across it, and, and I blame uh, Kent Oglund for this, but we were supposed to do a training together. Uh, at that time, I lived in Sweden, and I was supposed to have copied all the training VMs with me to the U.S., uh, I didn't. So now I needed to transfer almost 200 gig of VMs over from Sweden to over a hotel Wi-Fi, and that is really stretching it, uh, to put it mildly. But this little utility runs on any Windows version. It runs on Linux and Mac as well. But it can archive tons of VMs to a fairly small footprint. So if you have 50 Windows 11 VMs, that are like 40 gig each, the resulting file is going to be about 40 because it works on the block level. Uh, same as the Windows deduplication does in server. Like when you have a volume like I have here with you know, tons of VMs, almost two terabyte, but this one is, is 700. Or this one here, uh, this is the one I'm trying to rescue at the moment. Uh, that's about a, a, a 1.3 occupying 800. And probably this one here is one of the better ones. Yeah, 2.3 terabyte using 500. So, wow. Yeah, long story short, I've been archiving uh, VMs into this backup utility. It's just a command line utility, but it's uh, fantastic. So, when you have a backup of your VMs already, so these are all my server VMs and all my client VMs across. There's like 100 VMs in total. When you have an archive, you can just continue to add to it. And it runs super quick because it only copies the deltas into the archive. And when you restore it, you can say, all right, what version would you like to have from it? So this is like a, a poor man's versioning backup, but it's all self-contained in the single file. Uh, so this one has been my friend for the past few days here and uh, highly recommend looking into it if you, if you need an archiving utility that is suitable for virtual machines. So that's what I've been doing.